It's been noted that uh, human beings can live for about 40 days without food, uh, about eight days without water, about four minutes or so without air, but only a few seconds without hope. We need hope in our lives. Hopelessness, I, I think, is one of the greatest uh, threats to our lives, as great a threat as, as cancer or heart disease. Hopelessness is something that is difficult to live with. There, there is a hope that the world offers us, and it lasts for a little while, but it tends to depend on things that, that really don't last or really don't, don't ultimately satisfy. But the hope that God's Word talks about is different. The hope that God gives us can be defined as this, an expectation based on the promise of God. Hope is an expectation based on the promise of God. That hope is different because that hope will last. That hope will not disappoint. It's not based on things that can't satisfy and not based on things that will fade away. Hebrews 6.19 says this, says we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And that's what this, this Easter celebration, this celebration of, of the resurrection of Jesus is about. The fact that Jesus is alive gives us hope that, that is an anchor for our soul, that is an anchor for who we are, that, that we won't be tossed and turned by everything that comes along, that we are firm, we are secure. It's the rock that we can build our lives on so that when the storms of life do come, we will stand. As we look at this passage this morning, we see a number of things. The first thing we see is that there was a removal of hope. This is after Jesus died. And up until this point, the disciples and all those who followed Jesus, their hope was pinned on him. Their hope was pinned on, on Jesus coming back and, and coming and, and, and giving them this, this new kingdom. They were following him to to see what this new kingdom was going to be like. And some thought it was a political kingdom. His disciples, I think, were just starting to understand that it wasn't wasn't just about politics. It was about a new way of being. The events of Palm Sunday that we focused on last week probably just bolstered that hope. As they came into Jerusalem and there was this great celebration, it probably just just put them at a a spiritual high where this this hope was at, at its highest point. And then we talked about how all of that fell apart in those days following. They had put all their their hopes, all of their their aspirations were with Jesus. No one believed and hoped more in Jesus than his disciples, those who followed him, those who walked with him. They had left everything for him. They had left homes, they had left families, they left jobs. They left all their possessions just to follow this man, Jesus, because their hope was in him. They believed in him. They knew there was something about him. And as they followed him and walked with him and listened to what he said, he, they saw teaching that, that no one else was, was able to give, not just, just teaching about the law, but a teaching with authority. And they saw things that no one else saw. They saw people healed. They saw demons uh, fleeing from him, having, having to obey his command. And it wasn't even that they just saw these things. As they walked with Jesus and Jesus taught them, they began to do some of these things themselves. And all this comes crashing down. They had seen so much. They'd heard so much. They'd experienced so much. And yet, as they saw Jesus arrested and and beaten and hung on the cross, all those hopes just crashed around their feet. If there had been another way, God certainly would have done it. But this was the way that that God had chosen to save his people. They didn't 100% understand it at that point. But it didn't end there. And again, we talked about this on, on Good Friday, that the, the story is, is a sober one, and it's, it's a hard one to hear. It's a hard one to read about when we think about all the things that Jesus went through. And if the story just ended there, 
we wouldn't have reason for hope. But we know that it didn't. That yes, Jesus did die. That just Jesus was hung on a cross and Jesus was placed in a tomb. Those, those symbols of, uh, there's probably no greater symbols of, of death and hopelessness than that, that cross and that tomb. And yet the story didn't end there because we see also in the story that hope was resurrected. As we talked about again last week at, at Palm Sunday, the idea of a sacrificial lamb wasn't a new concept to the Jewish people, to the disciples. It's just what was done at Passover. And it harkened back to another time of God's salvation for people. And so when Jesus laid his life down, as he walked toward the cross and laid his life down to be that sacrificial lamb, we see that he was a different kind of a lamb. And what set Jesus' sacrifice apart was that death couldn't hold on to him. Throughout all of history, when, when these lambs were, were sacrificed, not one of them came to life again. Death had them. But Jesus came to life again. Jesus rose again. Death couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep him down. When he walked out of that grave, the penalty for, for your sin and, and for my sin was paid in full, once and for all. And the proof was that Jesus didn't stay in that grave. That he won the victory over judgment and over death. Hebrews 9, 26 to, or 24 to 26 says this, For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself to appear now before God on our behalf. And he did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again, like the high priest here on earth who enters the most holy place once a year with the blood of an animal. If that had been necessary, Christ would have had to die again and again ever since the world began. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. And so Jesus' resurrection, the fact that we celebrate him being alive, was proof that he came and was able to accomplish what he came for. He came to to be the Lamb that sacrificial lamb. He came to be that the one who would bring salvation to human beings. Hope was alive again. Hope was resurrected in the people. Here in chapter 20, we we read about that, that resurrection of hope. And we see one of his followers, Mary Magdalene, coming to where Jesus was buried, to that tomb coming to get some closure maybe, coming to do what had to be done, preparing Jesus' body for his, for his final burial. She went to mourn the dead, and instead she found life. She found that it really came about as Jesus said it was going to. And we're told as she approached the tomb, she saw that that big stone had been rolled away. She knew something was, was different. Something wasn't right. And she noticed that the body was gone. And so she runs back and she gets a couple of the disciples there. And they all look around, it says. And then there's a verse that's really almost easy to miss. Small little verse, verse 10. It says, then they went home. The disciples who were there kind of continued to live in that place of hopelessness. They saw Jesus was gone. They looked around to see what they could see, and they went home, kind of carried on with their lives in that place of hopelessness. But Mary, for some reason, stays. She wasn't ready to to go. She wasn't ready to go back to her home and kind of carry on with life as it was. We don't know why. It doesn't tell us that, but she stayed there, and she continued to, to mourn and to weep. And in doing that, in staying in that place, and not being willing to just go back to life as usual or go back to what life would be she stayed and in that her hope is resurrected in that she meets Jesus and in that instant she knew that her hope had been well placed all along she met Jesus in the flesh seeing that he was everything that he had claimed to be that he was able to do all the things that he had claimed he was going to do 
And she runs back to the disciples and tells them, I've, I've seen Jesus. Hope had returned. Hope had called her by name and spoken to her. Just like Mary, our hope is bound up in Jesus. There are all kinds of things in this life that, that can strip away our hope. Things that can cause us to, to, to question what's going on. Question even God's goodness. There are difficulties and challenges that we all face. But we don't put our hopes in those things. We put our hopes in Jesus, who is alive and who does help us in those places and who was able and is able to do all the things that he accomplished to give us life abundant here and now and life eternal when this life is over. And this is the reality of hope. There's a training exercise that is used sometimes in certain kinds of sports. It's called parachute training. And so when athletes have a parachute strapped to their back, and then they just have to run as fast as they can. And I've never done it, obviously. But my guess is that it's, that it's not only incredibly hard physically, but it must be frustrating. And they're, they're giving it all they've got. And the faster they run, it seems the more resistance on that, that parachute is there, and the, probably the slower they go. The parachute slows your progress to almost nothing. And I think that there's lots of people, and it could be very easy in this life to feel that way. That as we put more and more effort into life, as we put more and more effort into, into trying to get places, it feels like there's a parachute on our backs and we're not getting anywhere. If we have the weight of our past, if we have the weight of the, the burdens that we carry or our own sins and our own failings and our, our putting our hope in ourselves to provide for ourselves. It can feel like we're doing that, that parachute training where we're putting an awful lot of effort into life but not making very much progress. The resurrection of Jesus comes to strip that parachute off of our backs. To take that burden off of us. To free us from that. That's the hope that we have in Jesus being alive. That he frees us from our own efforts. That he frees us from any hopelessness that we feel when we, we place our hope in the things of the world that don't deliver on their promises. John 8.34, we see Jesus saying this, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now as a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. That is what Jesus came to do, to set us free from that, that burden, from our own striving, and to give us the gift of hope. Hope for this life comes through Jesus. There's nothing else, there's no one else that we can turn to for hope that's going to last, for hope that's going to make a difference in our lives, and for hope that gives us surety of what we can expect when this life is over. There's fulfillment in that relationship with Jesus that can't be found anywhere else. When we focus our eyes on Jesus and the hope that he gives us, when we stop chasing after the things that, that are of this world that are just empty and, and unfulfilling, then God says that we will have life to the full. We will have life abundant. And that's what we celebrate today. That's what the life of Jesus gives us. He proves that he really was able to accomplish what he set out to do. To conquer sin, to conquer death, to pay the price for us. So that we don't have to pay that price and carry that burden ourselves. That's what it boils down to. I mean, I like Easter bunnies as much as the next guy, especially chocolate ones. Maybe more than the next guy. But take all that away. All the other symbols that can be, can be good and fun symbols, it boils down to Jesus being our hope. Jesus being the hope of glory. Being the, the promise that that our debt is paid. Through relationship with Jesus, we have everything that we need for life. 
for life here, for life when this life is over. He is the hope of eternity. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your incredible gift to us. Thank you for being our sacrificial lamb, for laying your life down. Thank you for being that that flawless lamb who was able to, to pay the price for us because you didn't need to pay it for yourself. And thank you, God, that, that, uh, that Jesus is alive, that he is with you, he's sitting with you now, and he's interceding for us. Thank you, Jesus, that through you, that through your gift, that through your, your making a way and becoming the way for us, that we can have that relationship with our God and our Creator. God, help us not to lose that sense of of awe and wonder over the resurrection of Jesus. We pray these things in his name. Amen.